Life Audio. Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And if you're on Facebook, look for our community group. Just look for Daily Bible Podcast under Community. We would love to have you there. And one thing that you posted recently in our our community was about the kings and helping us understand the kings, Trisha. And that that helped me and many others just go, oh, yeah, there are so few that are truly following God yet, you know, kind of messing up. And there are so many more that are evil and have done evil in the sight of the Lord. So yeah. um Thank you for posting that. We see other people posting other things that are just so helpful in helping us all learn a little bit more. So yeah, those graphics yes. help help us see it. Um, mm-hmm. And it was so sad when you saw on Solomon when he was the color that he started out good and then turned evil. I'm like, that makes my heart hurt to see that color represented. But that was what happened. But yeah, yeah. very the visuals help sometimes. They they do. Okay, so continuing on learning and understanding about the kings and all that happened during those times. So today we read 2 Kings 13, verses 1 through 21, 2 Chronicles 24, verses 23 through 27, and 2 Kings 13, verses 14 through 25. Okay, so yesterday, Jehu's son Jehoahaz took the throne, and Jehoahaz followed the example of Jeroboam. Why Why did he pick that guy to follow I the know. example of? You know, because you're like, well, Jehu almost got it right, so why not get it right or almost get it right like your dad? Well, yeah. anyway, so Jehoahaz, he did evil in the Lord's sight. So God allowed King Haziel and King Ben-Hadad to defeat Israel. And you remember those names, those names we talked about and Elijah prophesied about. And so anyway, so those guys are in our past, but they're also right now in our mm-hmm. present. So King Jehoahaz prays for mercy and confesses his sins to God because he knows what he should do. So he does what he should do. And of course, God rescues them, but they continue to sin. Mm. And Jehoahaz's son, well, he takes over and his name is Jehoash. And notice in 2 Kings 13 verses 11, King Jehoash refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam led Israel to commit, commit, that led Israel to commit. So that's a strong word. He refused to turn from the sins, which makes me think that there was a prophet that went in there and said, you need to, you need mm-hmm. to turn from your ways. And he refuses. And that's a bad dude. That's, that's a bad dude because he knows he had to have heard from his dad who God was. Well, anyway, we head back to the King Joash story in Judah, and it does not end well. And in an effort to bargain with King Haziel, Joash takes the temple things and sends them to him. And the Arameans still, they still have one, of, they still won one of the battles. And notice how God was in this victory for them. Like God was in the enemy victory and Joash's advisors plot to take his life and they succeed. And and you just sit there and you kind of just, you shake your head and you're like, Israel, Israel. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Judahites, they they do what's evil in the sight of the Lord. Israel does what's evil in the sight of the Lord. All of Israel. And you just sit there and go, guys, guys, you're told over and over again, over and over and over and over again. I don't think I can say over enough. (laughs) You're told over again, just stop turn from your ways. And yet you're like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do what's right in my sight. 
I, I was ranting about this to John last night. <laughs> I was ranting about him, the kings of Judah. <laughs> so I was thinking yeah. Jehoiada, the priest, just, they just rebuilt the temple. They just gathered all this money. They just got the articles again. And then what happens next is he gives it all trying to save his hiney. I'm thinking you were on such a good path. I mean, come on, yeah. guys. Oh, but okay. So that we also you mentioned there's 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 prophets that are going in here and as our reading continues i love because all the prophets are going to be showing up and it's so cool because we're going to hear like a, a chapter from this prophet and a chapter from this other prophet because god was sending multiple messages to these kings to get their act together and elisha was one of those and now he's at his life's end um so he's getting close to death and joash visited him and Elisha's on his deathbed, and Joash wept over Elisha and expressed his admiration for the prophet, recognizing the significance of his presence in Israel. Elisha then instructs Joash to take a bow and some arrows and open the east window. The prophet places his hands on Joash's hands and orders him to shoot an arrow toward the east. Joash obeys and he shoots the arrow, and Elisha then proclaims that it symbolizes the Lord's victory over Aram, indicating that Joash would succeed against his enemies. Elisha further instructs Joash to take the remaining arrows and strike the ground. Now Joash hits the ground three times and then he stops. And then it says much, much to Elisha's disappointment. He was upset. He only hit the ground three times. And he explains that Joash is going to have victory over Aram three times. But if he would have hit it more, it would have been complete victory. I think it was so funny. I can just picture this old guy like, no, no, why did you stop at three? And so uh, then after this encounter, Elisha dies and he's buried. But I think the coolest part of today's reading was in 2 Kings 13, 21. And it says groups of Moabite raiders used to invade the land each spring. And once some Israel, Israelites were burying a man and they spied this band of these Moabite raiders coming and they hastily threw the corpse into the tomb of Elisha and they fled. And as soon as the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man Ooh. revived and jumped to his feet. And I just love like how the side note is thrown in here. Like, you know, there, it's all this official record. And then the writer's like, oh, and then this really cool thing happened because that doesn't happen every day. Um, but after Elisha's death, some strong bones, those, those are some are strong some bones. Spiritual bones. The Holy Spirit was in those bones. <laughs> so. After Elisha's death, the king of Aram, he did oppress Israel. However, God showed his favor toward Israel and had compassion to them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And King Haziel of Aram died, and Ben-Hadad, his son, became king. And Jehoash, son of Jehoaz from Israel, recaptured the towns taken from Israel. And it says, how many times did Joash repeat Aram? And it was three, just like Elijah had said. He defeated him three times. And so it's like Elisha was there and now he's gone too. So they're losing these spiritual advisors that are trying to lead them the right direction. You would think that Israel would see or some of these kings who had these conversations with these prophets would see. Mm -hmm. This is what God said would happen. And this is what will happen. And he we went guess. to see him. Like he went to see him and he was partly turned to the Lord, but yeah, not all the way. Okay. Well, let's ponder that while we take a break, hear from our sponsor, then we'll come back with the word of the day. Stay tuned. Hey everybody. I'm Dale. And I'm Tamara. And we're hosts of the Kynos Project podcast. Where we help you tackle ancient Christian truths in everyday settings. The word kainos means new, and that's exactly what we want to do on our podcast. Bring something new from what is old in our faith. And on this show, you might hear us explore topics like what the Bible has to say about student loan forgiveness, discuss how the satanic temple affects our view of religious liberty in America, or even question why is it that so many people are having rapture anxiety. To learn more about the podcast, go to lifeaudio.com. The Historical Jesus Podcast is the sweeping saga of the life and times of Galilean Jesus of Nazareth, as well as the faith, religion, and church founded to honor and disseminate his acts and teachings. 
Join me, Mark Vinette, on this fascinating journey through time, exploring the many great works of Christian theology, literature, architecture, music, and art inspired by the words and deeds of Jesus Christ. Okay, the word of the day is limit. So limit, limit, limit speed limit. Uh, yeah, a, a restriction on the size or amount of something permissible or possible. So we start off today's reading with Joash with these two kings. Joash again is in Judah and Jeho- Jehoaz becomes king of Israel. And Jehoaz did evil following Jeroboam. And so the Lord's anger burned and God kept you know, he was against Israel. And so when I look at this continued wickedness, I am amazed that God just didn't wipe them out. I mean, do you ever feel like that, Michelle? Like, yeah. okay, like, let's just, these people are not getting it right. And so really God put a limit to his anger. He didn't completely wipe them out. And then Jehoaz turns around and seeks the Lord's favor. And the Lord listened. He listened, he helped him, but they still didn't get rid of the Asherah poles. And then his son does evil. And so I think the king could have turned around completely, but the king's commitment was limited. He only would turn to, when he needed help, he turned to God, but then he didn't do all that God required. And so the king of Judah, Joash, also has the opportunity to turn to God. Instead, he takes the gold and the treasures from the temple and sends them to the king of Aram. And Aram carries them away and... Aram still won, even though they had all the treasures, because God was against Judah. And then we go back to Jehoash, king of Israel, and he's told to strike the arrows, and he only strikes them three times. And because he only struck them three times, he only won three times. And I'm sure, I I don't know if Joash knew that he should have kept striking, but the thing that was clear is this. It says in 2 Kings 13, 23, But the Lord was gracious to them and had compassion and showed concern for them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To this day, he has been unwilling to destroy them or banish them from his presence. So God was angry, but he limited himself and he didn't destroy the people. And it just makes me show that God's love for his people was limitless. And he thought back to that covenant. In Exodus 33, 18, it says, The Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and you will call out my name Yahweh before you, for I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. And there's a limit to God's mercy and compassion, but he still gets to choose. And it seems like he's a lot more merciful and compassionate than I would be in some of these cases. Um, We see this ongoing idolatry of the kings and the people, and they must be wearing God's patience then. But he holds strong and he remembers his covenant. And, you know, that one time that Jehoaz turns to God, God is there. Like, he was just waiting for the, that prayer to come off his lips, and God was there. And it reminded me of David, who prayed, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within in me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. And that was in Psalm 51. You know, we may be disappointed that David was this great man of God that sinned, but we see, I mean, compared to all the sins that followed him, I could see why David's called a man after God's own heart. Because he did, he repented and turned back to God. And in that one moment when this king repented and turned back to God, God was like right there. And so I think mm. even as people, we have limits, but God, he has so much more compassion and mercy. And sometimes we think I've messed up too big. I can't go to God with this. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know if any of us are doing these things some of the kings are doing, uh, but God has mercy and compassion for whatever we do. Whenever we think something we're doing is too big, God is just waiting for us to get the end of ourselves and turn to Him. You know, as you're talking about limits, my mind goes to how um, we we are limited in so many ways. I need sleep and I need a lot of sleep. And as much as I wish that I could do a lot more, I'm limited in my capacity that way. I'm limited in my capacity of of a knowledge or smartness. I'm limited in my capacity of how far I can push my body. And um and there's just so and and I know that I'm limited in my capacity to love. I like mm-hmm. to think that I can love well or that I I um can, um, you know, sort of roll with the punches and do different things like that. 
but I'm limited in that those capacities to love, to roll with the punches. And even I'm thinking about joy, like Joe and I are right now are praying for, for joy in each of our lives. And not that we don't have joy, but, but we want to see more joy. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's a limit that's been put on us yet. It's something we can ask God for. It's kind of like wisdom. I don't, Sometimes I feel like I there's been a cap on the wisdom, and it's like no, ask for it. God will give mm-hmm. you more, and 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 so on the opposite side, where us humans are limited in so many things, in clarity and insight, and in mm-hmm. and, and as I mentioned, wisdom. God is not limited in any of that. Mm -hmm. His justice knows no bounds. His love, his mercy, his knowledge, his wisdom, his goodness knows no bounds. His gentleness, his guidance, his patience. There, there is just, there's something about serving a limited less God who is full of all of those things. Mm -hmm. And yet to put our, to wrap our head around that is, is, almost well it's impossible it's limited for us and mm-hmm. and yet he is a limitless god and um and just like with the israelites he continued to have mercy when in our minds we're like mm, no no I'm not we're done have i'm done with you <laughs> and yet god's like i'll continue to have patience i'll continue to show mercy and we will see that in the days to come he continues to have patience he continues to show mercy he is a God who is limitless in so many areas. Yeah, and we're going to be getting into the prophets who, again, are sending the warning and sending, I will destroy you, you know, you're not following me. But then there's so many words of compassion and so mm-hmm. many words of love and so many promises in those prophets' words. We're going to be in these upcoming weeks hearing the the prophecies, a lot of prophecies pointing to Christ. And it's just so cool that in the middle of where we're like, I'm done with you. <laughs> like I'm over this, we're, which we can't because we have a lot to read more Kings and more prophets coming to warn them. Uh, God is not only sending the prophets to turn them back to him, but he's giving that promise of Jesus who is coming, who is for everybody, who he can pour out his compassion and mercy to the whole world and his hearts for the whole world. It's it's just like God is so gracious to give the prophets these words. And we know it wasn't easy for them to come mm-hmm. and take these messages. But then we can look back and say, in this time when the people were just doing whatever they wanted, God continued to send these messengers to give these people hope and to point them to Christ. And it's that's what's really exciting me about. It just makes me realize like, God, you are, again, so much bigger in your love and your mercy and your wisdom and your goodness than my limited mind can even wrap around. And the more I read, the more I just feel like this growing love for God and this growing um, just amazement, how he puts up with all of us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And as we just, just make mistakes, just like these Kings were. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Well, Trisha, can you pray for us and Mm -hmm. just that we would just stand in awe of our limitless God? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord, um, I, we just come to you. And Lord, we confess that we have limits. We have limits to patience. We have limits to love and compassion, Lord. And I pray just even as Michelle was encouraging us that we would just ask you for more. Whatever our need is, if we need more joy, if we need more compassion, if we need more mercy or patience or uh, dependence on you, Lord, that I pray that in our weaknesses, you will just come in and, and help us to be stronger in these areas. I thank you that you are limitless, your love and your compassion and your mercy and your patience and your your goodness and your kindness, all these things, Lord. I thank you that you show us in this reading that you limit yourself, even though you are angry, you do not completely destroy, but you sent these messages, Lord. I pray as we continue to read and continue to tune into your word and to to connect with you during this time that we will be overwhelmed by your goodness and our hearts will just expand and love you even more, Lord, and be with us and may you receive the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the Word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Okay, so get out your pencils. Tomorrow, we are reading 2 Kings 14, verses 1 through 14. 2 Chronicles 25, verses 1 through 24, 2 Kings 13, verses 12 and 13, 2 Kings 14, verses 15 through 16, 2 Kings 14, verses 23 through 27, 2 Chronicles 25, verses 25 through 28, 2 Kings 14, verses 17 through 22, 2 Kings 15, verses 1 through 5, 2 Chronicles 26, verses 1 through 21. And then, guess what? We're going to read <laughs> We're a whole not book done. of the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to read Jonah 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is a nice little cherry on top of the Sunday. Okay, maybe right. not. But <laughs> it, it's maybe a little bit easier reading than what we have been reading. But that's yeah. our reading list for tomorrow. It's, it's a lot. But it is good. a lot. It's a very interesting reading list. It's very interesting reading. It's a good reading list. It really is. Okay, I want to take a second here before we wrap up the show to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com and you're going to find other great podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God. They've got shows on prayer, on Bible study, parenting, and so much more. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. I'm Dale. And I'm Tamara. We're hosts of the Kainos Project podcast. Where we help you tackle ancient Christian truths in everyday settings. To learn more and subscribe, go to lifeaudio.com.